Hey friends, welcome to a new Affinity Photo tutorial. If you've been following me on the social medias, you'd probably know that I am an enormous fan of Affinity Photo and I've recently got obsessed with certain features of it and I wanted to share it with you guys. So you may have seen in my social medias um, that I have done some edits inspired by an artist named Alberto Seveso. You've probably heard of him. He's an amazing Photoshop illustrator and uh, he does these incredible images which I'll show on the screen right now and I've been studying him for my A-level art and design exam and I wanted to learn how to do it with Affinity Photo and put it in my projects and you may have seen that I've done it and I was quite pleased with how it looked. I'll flash them up on the screen now. I've really enjoyed it, it's quite time consuming but it's really fun to do and um, it's not too difficult to achieve which is nice. Uh, let's let's get started I think. So you may recognize the person on the screen. It's actually a drawing I completed yesterday um, of uh, a YouTuber you may or may not have heard of, Jordan Marin aka Captain Sparkles. It was his birthday yesterday so I decided to do a little project um, inspired by him and for him essentially for this project and uh, this drawing it turned out quite cool, it was nice. I used the uh, eye pencil with iPad Pro, which was really exciting. Uh, I just got the eye pencil yesterday and uh, it look makes it look really nice. I was really pleased with this drawing. I thought we would uh, manipulate it a little bit and make it a bit more exciting and out there and uh, see how we do with that. What we wanna do is you wanna drag in your reference image, which I've already done, and it will just pop up on the screen. And over here, you may notice in the layer editor, it has appeared as background image and it's already locked, which is fantastic. So what we want to do is make loads of duplicates of this layer. So we want to do Command J quite a few times, doesn't matter how many, just make a few. That should do. That should do it nicely. And then what we want to do, oh gosh, I'm just realizing, oh my gosh, all of the, all of the flaws. Oh, the eyebrows. Okay, no, that's fine. This is why we're doing this because from a distance it looks all right, but then when you zoom in, it's like, no. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go over to this toolbar here. Let me just zoom in so I can see better. And we want to select the pen tool. Make sure it's on the pen tool and not on the, uh, the, the node tool. So don't worry about all this. We can leave it. It should be set to default. And what you want to do is select one of these curve curve modes. So either this one or this one, or if you want, you can do sharper images. I might experiment with sharper textures later on. But to begin with, we just want to do one of these, whatever you find easier to draw curved shapes. So I generally tend to use this one as it's much easier. And then what we want to do is choose a main facial feature, right? like this, the eye here and the eyebrow. And we just want to create a loose curve around the eye to make a nice shape and as you can see in the layer editor here it's come up with an automatic pixel or no not a pixel layer sorry a curve layer and uh, it's put it over top of the the uppermost layer here which is exactly what we want so i'm actually gonna bring that in a little bit because make the shape you can do whatever shape you want you're not restricted, you can use the sharper tools if you want to. I might do that in a second, but for now we're just going to leave it. Oh, I should also note before I carry on, this video was also inspired by a tutorial that helped me get to know how to do it with Infinity Photo. She teaches us how to do a Photoshop uh, picture inspired by Alberto Savesso. She's amazing, I honestly can't remember her name off the top of my head, but I will flash her up on the screen now and provide a link in the description. Ultimately, this is a translation video and um, she is amazing, she's really um, explained it so well and I managed to translate it really easily in Infinity Photo. So big, big hand to her and Alberto Silvesto technically, I don't deserve any credit for this. Anyway, let's carry on. Okay, so once you've drawn your shape here over your uh, facial feature, again, you don't have to do it over the facial feature, I just like to bring out the facial, the key facial uh, features as Jordan does have really nice eyes. We wanna keep them brought out, so what we want to do is select this layer right here and then we just want to drag it to the right a little bit until you see this faint little bar appear. I'm not really sure how to describe that. So basically this embeds, um, the, basically this 
allows this layer here to be embedded within this layer here and it creates a clipping mask what is known as a clipping mask boom so as you can see in the little layer editor here his eye only his eyes appeared but you can't see it here so i'm going to quickly show you by unchecking all of these oh facebook notification excellent by unchecking all of these boxes i'm going to show you what it's done it's going to take me a while maybe i shouldn't have made this many layers to start with but hey hi so check it out basically it's embedded that layer into the shape so if we use the oh yeah if we use the drop down arrow here you can see it it's right there it's created a clipping mask it's really cool so what we want to do now is we want to bring these layers back up just that one leave the other ones blank for now and then so we can see it better and see what we're working with and give a really nice sort of gradient shadow effect so it doesn't look like just a weird chunk has been taken out of his face what we want to do and we may need to redo this a bit later on so what we want to do now is go into effects right here which i've already gone into sorry i've had to cut because i'm sneezing and uh we want to go down here we want to click outer shadow um so what we want to do here is we want to bring the radius up a bit so see it's like coming off his face a bit it looks kind of weird at first but um when we've done it to like everywhere on his face it will look really cool trust me and then Radius can be as thick or as thin as you like. Opacity, do whatever you want with the opacity. Like so. And then we want to bring that up. I'm going to, I don't know, I might leave it in the middle. I'm not sure. If you want to alter the shape, if it looks a bit weird, what you want to do is click on the bent, just hold down and click on the pen tool and this menu will come up and click on the node tool. At least I believe it will change it. Yes, it will. <laughs> Learning new things. Ah, oh, aren't we clever? Okay, so we want to bring this around here. And then bring this here. I don't know, I just I just felt like changing it up. You don't have to. I'm going to bring it away from the hairline. I don't want the hair to be affected at all. But, of course, you can. It's your picture. You do what you want. So, to save us from having to constantly do the um, the shadow effect, the layer effect over and over again what we're going to do is we're going to command we're going to make sure we're clicking into our layers we're going to command c um this layer so it copies to our clipboard for now i'll show you how to paste it in a second once i've sorted out the second layer so let's move on to our second layer and do the same thing it's created the clipping mask again if you drag it under there and just to check it's done it yes it's done it there's no there should be no reason why it shouldn't do that but it's always good to check so anyway what we want to do is we want to we want to paste the style of the previous layer which we copied to our clipboard into this layer to save us from having to alter the shadow manually so what we want to do is command shift paste and voila it's pasted the exact same styling as the previous layer so it makes it look all nice and smooth so yeah cool it's looking kind of cool now it looks kind of weird it looks like he's wearing weird glasses but let's keep going shall we and try and finish up the whole face
So we've done all these rather fantastic, awesome looking shapes now. Um, we might clean it up a bit later, um, as they're a bit spaced out and there's a few gaps, but, you know, they look kind of cool for now. I'm thinking that maybe if we duplicate these even more, let's create a new blank layer just underneath the squiggles. I'm going to take one of these images here, so we're going to drag it over here, pop it in. Where did it go? Ah, it's behind, so we can't see it. Let's bring it up here. Yes, it's here. So, looking a bit strange there. I'm thinking we have to do is grab the pencil. Alright, so now that we've drawn our pickaxe outline and we've hidden the image, the reference image, we're gonna take this, drag it underneath there, and voila, it has created a pickaxe for us. I think we'll keep it there for now. We can move it around later. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna see, has it stayed on the clipboard? No, it hasn't. I did close the app and I did take a break just now. So I'm gonna have to copy the effect from there and paste it here. We wanna go into layer effects and we wanna go down to color overlay. I'm thinking we should have, well we'll stick to his theme colours which are the primary, the art primary colours. We bring this here, bring it around like that and we don't want it to stick out like that. So what we want to do is click here and then go to opacity and bring the opacity way down, way down like so. That is kind of, that looks cool, it's kind of sticking out of it. Let's get rid of the background for now. Let's move this down here, like so, maybe down on the neck as well, and maybe we'll duplicate it and we'll move it here, I have a notification, duplicate it and then move this just underneath it, and then what we want to do is duplicate the background again because we've deleted the previous background from our experimentation okay so it's put the it's really subtle but we've got the pickaxe going on in the background I really like it down here I'm gonna leave this down here and you can really see it like really slightly in the background which I think is really quite nice Gonna add a little bit more color just in a separate pixel layer under here we're gonna click on this pixel layer here and I'm thinking we get a brush and we get a really funky looking brush whatever brush you like I tend to go for the spray paints personally I'm gonna bring the spray paints up and then we're gonna choose one of these two which I really enjoy again you can choose whatever one you like as well I have Keep reminding you of that because it is your drawing, and then I think we're going to get some red splodges. Just we'll change the opacity, you can change the flow, and just bring in some red splodges like this. There, cool, loads of splodges. Now it looks like we've kind of overdone it with the splodges a bit. But bear with me, bear with me, it's going to look 10 times better when I'm through with it. So, if we go back to our pixel layer, which we foolishly made earlier on, with the background embedded within the blank pixel layer, we're going to take this paintbrush here, we're going to make sure the brush is, is still the same, on the same brush tool, we're going to bring up the width a little bit, we're going to bring up the opacity, oh, that's already done, and we're just going to draw it back in like so you see makes it look a bit cooler right let's bring back the headphones here this is looking kind of funky so his face is a little bit drowned out and I've realized that the stars are a little bit too narrow so I'm just gonna go back in and add a few touch-ups
I keep forgetting this, but if you want to make edits onto the shaping, you're going to need to, and if you want to move it around like so, you're going to need to take out the background image and replace it. Because, you see it does that and you don't want that to happen, so <laughs> yes. But if you're just stretching it out, it's fine, it'll adjust. I'm thinking maybe we should change, add some slight adjustments to these, to these different layers here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into, we're going to leave the stars, the star shapes for now. So we're going to go into the sort of underlying shapes here, we're going to click on a few of these and I believe if we can change, if we go to effects, colour overlay and we can change the colour overlay like so. So, so I'm thinking I'm going to change it to blue and then go to a pasty and then take it down to 30%. Go back here, we're going to add that to clipboard, I'm going to paste it, oh, didn't mean to do that, and then we're going to paste the styling into these other curves like so. <laughs> facial features layer. We're going to rasterize the, this layer here, which may mean we'll have to do the layer effect again. Double click that, rasterize. rasterize. So as you can see the layer effect has disappeared a bit, but we can easily just, no we haven't clicked, we can easily just copy and paste from a different layer like we did before. Paste, copy the layer, paste the styling, remember? And the pasting the styling is Command Shift V, just a reminder. Copy that background again. We're gonna paste it there. Gonna bring it under here like we did before. And we're just going to grab the spray paint paintbrush. You can do this with as many of the other parts as you want. However, I would like to just do it on the main facial feature layer. Excellent. I think we're good for all that now. Now if you want to, go over to the adjustments layer and we can just add some easy little adjustments and then we should be okay. So I'm thinking maybe enhance the brightness a little bit. Where's the brightness? Brightness contrast. Bring up the brightness a little bit. Don't be afraid to really go to town on this bit. Change the colorization if you want. It looks pretty good, I think. I'm really pleased with it. And I hope this tutorial did help. I know there were some places where I was stammering a little bit. But there we go. Happy birthday, Jordan. If by some miracle you are watching, this one's for you. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you all next time.